Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 9-1, Scatter Plots. In this lesson, we're going to use the following vocabulary, five rate data and scatter plot. Vocabulary startup. Recall that the graph of a linear equation is a line on the coordinate plane. The slope of the line describes the direction and steepness of the line. So remember, when we look at a linear equation, we are looking at a line on the coordinate plane, right? And we're looking at, at, at a direct line. When they say linear, they mean line. On the coordinate grid down, I'm sorry, on the coordinate grid shown, graph and label two lines. One line should have a positive slope and one line should have a negative slope. So remember that a positive slope rises from left to right. And we have these arrow to show that it's a continuous slope. Okay, it's not a line segment, it just it continues beyond this point. And a negative slope will slope from left to right, right? From left to right in this motion. I always think of uh, when we analyze a slope, I think of the way we read a book. We always read from left to right. So if we see that from the left to the right, we are on a downward trend, this is a negative slope. If we are, if we read from left to right and we go on an upward trend, this right here is a positive slope. In these linear equations, remember that we have an x the, um, value and a y value and the x value is independent while our y value is dependent on the x. A scatter plot follows a similar rule but slightly different. The data or data with two variables or pairs of numerical observations are called bivariate data. A scatter plot shows the relationship between bivariate data graphed as ordered pairs on a coordinate plane. For example, the bivariate data set year and number of visitors can be displayed as a scatter plot. So we can have number of years for x value and the number of visitors per year can be displayed as a scatter plot. And this is what we mean by that. So here we have the seasons at the bottom. Okay, so the number of years or season one, season two, and so on. And then um, the viewers. And here we have, we start at 20 and we have go through increments of four each time. And you can see that for a scatter plot, we still have an X value and a Y value. And we graph the data as we go. And you don't, there's really no um, direct line or what we can say a linear variation. There's more of an association. We see a trend moving in the negative direction. Let's read this example. Construct a scatter plot of the number of viewers who watch new seasons of a certain television show. Let the horizontal axis or x-axis represent the number of seasons. Let the vertical axis or y-axis represent the number of viewers, so seasons, viewers. Then write the order pairs, season and viewers, the order pairs being x, y, x, y. Television ratings, here we have what you call a function table, and here we have essentially a coordinate or a graph, a, a scatter plot. And we see season one, 31.7, season two, 26.6, season three, 25 viewers, season four, 24.7 viewers. And you're probably wondering, it's, it, I was, you're probably wondering, well, how do you get 0.7 or point or point three? Well, it's, it's in the millions, okay? We're talking in the millions, as you can see, that's our unit. And then we will graph it order pair, these being your X values and these being your Y's, and you choose them. And we do the same for this example here. Okay, for this example, we have a scatter plot of the weight of an alligator at various times after hatching. 
here's your number of weeks. And notice that they're in no fixed increment. It starts by increasing by nine, then again by nine, then again by nine, but then not quite by nine. Here we have increased by seven, then again by nine, but then by six. So it's not really following a certain pattern or or a rule. And then we have varying weights. Clearly, we, we can see that it's increasing in value each week that passes, or each number of weeks that passes. So we are seeing a what we call a positive association or positive trend. We label our x-axis and our y-axis, and we start to plot. And you can see here that our time is always our x, while our output is our y. So our y is completely dependent on how long we have, right? Our weight is dependent on time. The more time that passes, the heavier the alligator gets. So let's let's plot these. And you can see that we're going to start with 0 and 6. So the alligator immediately starts at 6 pounds, right there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and plot these as we go. And please follow along. 9 is 8.6. 18 is 10. 27, 13.6. 34 is 15, 43 is 17.2, and 49 is 19.8. And you can see here that we have a trend, not a direct line. Um, they are, it is not a direct variation by any means, but we do have a positive association. And now for a key concept. If you're going to walk away with anything from this video, please let it be this part. This is the key concept of the lesson. Types of associations. So we have variable association. We have a positive association where it's clearly moving in the positive direction, increasing as time passes, or okay, they're both increasing simultaneously. We have a negative association where as we go through, I guess, time, this could be time, we see a decrease on the Y. So it is decreasing. So it's a negative association, and we have no association. It's uh, random. And then uh, linear association, so this is variable, this is linear. Linear, okay, the data points lie close to a line. You can almost draw a line in there, as you see right there. And then we also have nonlinear, okay, very similar to what when we have non-direct variation, or when we were drawing parabolas earlier in the year, okay, or what we call the exponential notations. So the shape points lie in the shape of a curve, like so, sort of like curving upward. So in short, when you see a linear association, the data is very tightly drawn together and you can see a very clear line um, or a very clear, uh, I guess, curvature. But when we have a variable association, they're spread apart a little bit more, but you can still see a trend. You can see an upward trend or a downward trend or absolutely no association. So being able to analyze the shape or the distribution of a plots is very important in this lesson. Let's take a look at this example. You can analyze the shape of the distribution of a scatter plot to investigate patterns of association. If the distribution shows a positive or negative association, then the distribution can be classified as a linear or nonlinear. The scatter plot below shows a positive nonlinear association cluster or outliers can be can also be identified. Okay, clusters or outliers. Let's just see here. We clearly have a, a cluster, and we see that we have a curved line. So there is a positive nonlinear association, okay? We do have a cluster, more data down here. And then we have an outlier, a fluke, something that does not go with the trend. So as you can probably tell by this point in the lesson, we are not actually doing any math or formulas as you, had, as you did in uh, chapter eight, which I know you did a lot of, so I'm sure you're probably feeling at least that we're not doing so much of that now. 
what you're really doing more is you are analyzing information. Okay, you're looking at information and you're going to identify it. So let's take a look at example two here so that you're able to do the next two. Interpret the scatter plot of the data of the amount of memory in an MP3, an MP3 is like an iPod player, and the cost based on the shape of the distribution. So we have the memory in gigs, okay, one to 10 gigs, and then we have the cost ranging from about 30 to 35 dollars up upwards towards high 40s and 50 and so on okay and you can see it goes up as high as 200 dollars so when we have the gigabytes per different types of mp3 players or you could say music devices music players we can see that there is a bit of a of a pattern the more gigs the more costly it is, okay? But how is it interpreted? Consider the different associations and patterns. Variable association. As the amount of memory increases, the cost increases. We already established that. Therefore, the scatter plot shows a positive association. There's definitely a positive association. I don't really see a linear association quite yet, but I guess you could draw a line to those four dots right there, right? Because it seems pretty straight. Linear association, the data appear to lie close to a line. So the association is linear. Yeah, like I said, if you find my, if you follow my pointer, you could get a line right there. And then other patterns. These appears to be a cluster of data. Yeah, there, there is definitely, there appears to be a cluster of data right around here, okay? one to two gigabytes of memory cost between 30 and 75 dollars there does not appear to be an outlier so no outliers nothing uh that is completely against the trend or out of the blue and yes we do have a, a common standard sort of between one to two gigs it's between 30 to 75 dollars this is interesting information guys interesting ways to analyze data and information this is great for statistics, it's great for stocks, it's great for uh, weather patterns. Okay, let's try it here. Interpret the scatter plot of the data of the time elapsed and the temperature of water based on the shape of the distribution. So we see here time passing, right, from 5 minutes to 40 minutes, and then we see here temperature in Fahrenheit decreasing right it's, it's going down as time passes so what can we say about this well is it a positive or a negative association do we see a linear or non-linear um, relation and do we see an outlier okay let's think on that one so the first thing i would like to write down is we have a negative association. As you can see, it is decreasing as time passes, so it's negative. More specifically, we have a linear association. And you can see we can draw we can draw a line there right through all the data. And it would give us um, points very close to the line on either side of the line. So it is negative association, linear association, thanks to the fact that the uh, the data appear to lie close to a line, and there is, there are no clusters. I don't see a clusters, and I also see no outliers. So we write no cluster and no outliers. And this right here is essentially the information I want you to collect from these scatter plots. Let's do C together. Okay. Now remember, you can pause the video at this point and draw your own graphs It'll take you a couple of minutes to do plot the points and make these notes remember these are your study notes for your tests when you do your tests so it's important to be able to analyze okay let's continue on interpret the scatter plot of the data for two weeks in may and the amount of ice cream sold at a shop based on the shape of the distribution so we have here the days in may Okay, all these days in May, 
and we have the number of pints sold, pints of ice cream. Now, I don't see how the day would really affect the, the pints. So in, in a way, we have two variables, two variables that don't vary directly. I would think that temperature would be a better, you would find a better, a more direct variation if the X values were temperature. The hotter it gets, maybe the more ice creams that is sold. But here, they're trying to see if there is any direct variation between the, the day of the month and the number of ice creams sold by pint. So what do we get? Well, I see there does not appear to be any variable association because it's scattered, so it's sort of random. And it's neither linear or nonlinear. I really don't see a line. I mean, I guess you could kind of see something there, but then you have all these outliers. So that makes it random or nonlinear. And there are no clusters and no outliers. So no association would be the first one I write. Neither linear and nonlinear and no clusters and no outliers. So no cluster or outliers. Please make sure you've copied all three down. Example three. Okay, let's pay attention closely to this one, everybody, because it is quite interesting and this is what the whole point is about. It's about being able to make um, guesses or predictions, conjectures as we analyze data. Here we have um, one table. This is one table just split into two parts because we don't have enough room to continue the table here. But you can see that the table shows public school enrollment from 1999 to 2010. So we have 11 years of data here, right? And we see that it goes from year zero or 1999 all the way up to uh, 2010, year 11. And you can see that um, this is the number of students that are enrolled in public schools. In 1999, it was almost 47 million and just over 47 million and so on. Okay, so we're, we are um, at the, round, the mark between 46 up to 50. And that's how many increased. Now we could find an average of uh, overall here if you really wanted to sort of see a, a rule or a function or how much did it increase by? Well, let's see, quick mental math tells me that we went up by 3.1 million, 3.1 million in 11 years. So that would be just under 3 million per year, okay, if my math is right, my mental math. So let's go here and see how this data, remember our time is our x, so our number of years are x, and the number of students enrolled will be our y, our outcome. And Construct and interpret a scattered plot of the data. If an association exists, make a conjecture about the number of students that will be enrolled in public school in the year 2015. So they want us to make a prediction based on the scatter plot. So we construct a scatter plot of the data. Let the horizontal axis represent the year since 1999 and the vertical axis represent the number of students. We know that. So here we go. And let's analyze this. Okay, let's analyze this like mathematicians that we are. We have the number of years and we have our number our, our students in the millions. And we see that we started with 40, if I, correct, if I remember correctly, let me see here, it was 46.9 million and then 47.2 million. So we try our best and we can see a clear association, a positive association, correct? So the variable association is a positive association, as we can see. We can also see that it, there's a linear association. You could almost draw a line with a y-intercept, um, with a y, uh, y, okay? And it would cut almost right through there. And if we continued our trend with the line, I had to draw a straight line I could draw a line right through there and follow the time down to the 15th year. And that would bring me to about just over 51 million, maybe 
51 point, yeah, about 51.2 million. So it helps us make a prediction, okay? So we can definitely say that the variable association, the years increase, um, the number of students increase. So as, as the, year, the years increase, the number of students increase. We saw that. Therefore, the scatter plot shows a positive association. It has a linear association. The data appears to lie close to a line, but it's linear. And there are no other patterns. There is no there are no clusters and no outliers. So if we had to, you can see here, and that's how the conclusion we came to. If we had to make a conclusion, or a, sorry, an estimate or a prediction, conjecture about the possible number of students by 2015 we would follow the pattern until the x value is 16 then or because it's 16 years after 1999 which would make it the year 2015 uh, then find the corresponding y value so there will be about 51 million uh, so i should have gone uh, one more year over to the 51 million but we were right on point there students enrolled in public schools in 2015 so about 51 million and finally, for our last example, we are going to analyze this one. I appreciate that you have stayed on top of this video the entire time and you have paid close attention to understand today's lesson so that when we do the guided practice, you will know exactly what to do. Let's take a look here at D. Interpret the scatter plot shown for the men's Olympic 100 meter freestyle swim winning times. If an association exists, make a conjecture about the winning time in the 2016 Olympics. Okay, so here we go. From 1952 to 2008, we see that the times have been decreasing. If the times are getting shorter as they swim, that means our swimmers are getting faster. All the way up to 2008, they are about 47 seconds. And in 1952, they were just at about 55 seconds. So from 55 down to about 47, we said, that's about eight seconds faster. From 55, eight seconds faster in about, what is this? What year would this be? This 1952 to 1960. Okay, we have about eight years there. Yeah, and it goes up by eight years each time. So eight times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Eight times fourteen would be 112, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so in 112 years, it's gone down by eight seconds. We could do math, a mathematical equation of ratios and see and break that down to a unit and that could help us. But rather than doing that, why don't we use our new found skill of finding that we have clearly in this direction, we have a, an association, right? There is a variable association, which is a negative association in this point. And we could almost draw a line could almost draw a line where we have the the dots following or falling on both sides of the line. Okay, that something like this. So that means that if we had to make it an estimate as to the year 2016, which would just be another six years later, and it would place us here every two every two units, every two squares, we're jumping by eight years. So every one of these is four. So four and another four is 2016. And it would put us at about 46 seconds, or maybe 46 and a half seconds, 46 and a half, because it doesn't quite cross there. So what can we say about this scatter plot? Well, we can say that it has there's a negative linear association with no clusters or outliers. And if this pattern continues, the winning time in 2016 should be about 46.5 seconds.
please pause the video and make sure you copy this down because this is the information I will be looking for you to provide in the following answers in the guided practice, independent practice, and any skills practice or extra practice that we do. I hope you were able to learn today's skill on this video and I hope you enjoyed it. See you in class, everyone.